Hey guys, two most common data interchange formats are JSON and XML. JSON certainly has taken over unmatched lead in today's time. So we'll focus on reading parts of JSON response or JSON document. A JSON document is written as name value pairs. A name value pair consists of a field name in double quotes, also known as key, followed by a colon and then followed by a value. And JSON path is a query language that helps in passing data represented into JSON format. Now I've created a JSON path series onto my channel and I recommend you to go and check it out. The link of the same is provided down below in the description of this video. The outermost level of a JSON document is either a JSON object also known as JSON dictionary, which is signified by curly braces or a JSON array, which is also called as JSON list, which is signified by square brackets. Based on that, we say whether a specific JSON document is a dictionary or a list. When working with rest assured, you will almost certainly at some stage required to extract values from elements or nodes within the API response and perform either assertions on them or do something else. These extractions can be simple like getting a single unique value that only appears once in the response. Often though, in the real world system, we receive huge bands of data and things aren't as simple. You may have a huge JSON array containing many JSON objects, maybe in an undefined order and only want to pick ones that match a certain condition. This is where GPath in REST Assured comes in. As you might already know, REST Assured uses Groovy under the hood. This means we can use the Groovy syntax when writing our code and it gives us immense control over what we want to extract. Groovy comes with a path expression language called GPath. It is this that is used to extract responses. You could say that GPath is similar to XPath for XML, but the great thing is that it works for both XML and JSON. You don't need to add any additional dependencies in REST Assured to use Groovy GPath. Having said that, it is immensely important to note that REST Assured JSON path syntax uses Groovy GPath notation and it is not to be confused with JWay's JSON path syntax. So if you are stuck, if you are looking out for some expression while working in REST Assured, you have to look out for Groovy's GPath notation. Okay. Now there are many reasons and here are some rest assured was created before JWay's JSON path. Rest assured is built in Groovy and thus it was natural to take advantage of its data structures and its query language. A GPath also works for other data formats such as XML and HTML, which means that once you learn GPath, you can apply to other types of data in an easy manner. Having said that, if you want to use JWay's JSON path, which is definitely more popular, then that too could be done easily. Just store the JSON response as a string and use JWay's APIs to read different nodes from that string. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can store the response as a string. But be cautious before adding any additional dependencies to your projects in general, okay? Why? Because every dependency comes with some maintenance cost for sure. If rest assured GPath is sufficient in your case, then stick to that. So let's get started. In this video, I'll show you number one, four different methods which allow us to work with JSON path in rest assured and number two, usage of dot and square bracket notations to access specific nodes, both in JSON dictionaries and arrays. Now, guys, this setup method is the boilerplate code you must have seen many times already if you have been following this series from very beginning. In this, we are making a GET request to fetch the member whose ID is 4. And from beginning, we have been working on our own API, okay? And this is that particular ID. So this ID has got name is equal to Sean and gender is equal to male. And we are storing the response of this API request in this response variable so that we can refer it in different methods down below. 
So in the first test case, we are going to call the path method on the response body and specify the JSON path to the attribute as its parameter. So let's break it down. Okay, so we have the response object. Now in a response, you get headers, you get status code, you get body. Okay, where do you write the JSON path? You write the JSON path in on the response body. Okay, so first let's fetch the response body. So we have response and then we have the method get body. This is going to return us the response body and on that we are going to invoke the path method. Now with the help of this method we get a value from the response body using the JSON path or XML path syntax. Okay, So as you could see from the suggestion you have to provide in two arguments but we are going to start with providing just one argument and that is going to be of type string. Okay. Now guys, any JSON document if you want to access, you have to start from its root element and the root element is guys denoted by dollar. Okay, and if you want to access any child node that are attached to the root element, you use either the dot notation or the square bracket notation. So therefore, let's start with the dot notation. So you say dollar dot and then you provide the direct child node. So in our case, the direct child node is ID. Okay, but unfortunately, this approach does not work in rest assured and you just have to say id okay so you just have to provide in the direct child nodes present in your response body okay now this is going to return you what this is going to return you the value of this id key okay so the value of this id key is an integer all right so you can store that in an integer variable like this okay now there is one more uh, way possible which you can use and that is you can directly invoke this path method onto the response object okay and rest assured will figure out that hey you know i know that you want to retrieve the body first and then want to access the json path which is this id okay guys so likewise what you can do is you can retrieve the name and the gender properties and then we are simply printing out all these values onto the console all right so we're good let me save everything and execute this so when I do so, I'll get ID is equal to four, name is equal to Sean, and gender is equal to male. All right, as you could see, ID four, Sean, and male. All right, good. Let me set it to false now. So when we use the path method, aren't you wondering how come rest assured decided to use JSON path instead of XML path since we didn't specify anything. Now guys, that's the magic of gpath in rest assured. If we wanted to specifically tell rest assured to use JSON path, we have to use JSON path method, which is targeted by our next test case. So let us set this to true okay so first we have to create json path object which comes from io.restassure.path.json.json path okay so let me create one so i say json path and like i said it comes from this particular package okay so let's create the variable json path equal to now we have to populate it right how do we do that so we just say response and again you have the method get body okay and on that you have this json path and this gives you response body extraction options okay either you can do this okay or you can also use the other way which is you can just get rid of this get body method okay like so both will give you the same result so let's find id whole document and later deserialize the response body into member class guys to identify the id i'm going to say json path dot now in here you see we have got a lot of methods okay so in here this returns us the object this also returns us the generic object as you could see then you have get boolean get byte get string okay get double get float get int you also have this get json object with the help of which we are going to deserialize and if the output of the json path is an array then you use this method get list okay and so on all right now depending upon the data type of the value that is being returned we have to smartly choose the right method okay so the id is integer and hence i say get integer okay and in here all we have to do is we have to provide the name of the property okay like so now let us 
print that to the console directly so i'm going to say sys out and like this now next is we have to identify the whole document so again we start with json path and now remember this whole document is an object okay so for that we have the method like i said get okay this is going to give us the object back all right so we are going to use this get string path and in here the thing that i'm going to provide is i'm going to provide a reference to the root document okay and the root element is represented by dollar like i explained before so you just say this and this is going to return you an object okay so you're going to store that inside an object reference like so okay and then let's print it out to the console so i just say obj all right so this is how we are going to fetch the whole document and print it to the console and the last one is we have to deserialize now we have to deserialize the whole json response body into member class okay and like i mentioned we have this get object method available on json path so i just say json path dot get object okay and in here you have these two arguments so once uh, first one is you provide the JSON path and second one is the class in which you want to deserialize it Okay, so let us select that. So how do you fetch the complete document again using the dollar and which class? So you say member Dot this is the model that we have created. All right now this member comes from our models package All right, so you the models dot member All right, and let's store that in the member object like so and let us print this out onto the console again i have created this model in my video on how to make post request and rest assured so i've already covered serialization and deserialization guys so we have the two string method all right we are good so this is all we have to do in this method all right so let me save everything and execute this okay so we are printing the id all right we are printing the id we are printing the whole document and then we have deserialized uh, the response and printed it to the console okay i have already taught you other ways through which you can deserialize i just wanted to cover that even if you are working with the json path still you have the option to convert your response into uh, the java classes okay let me set it to false so guys when we use this get method it returns as the object but in the documentation it is also mentioned that you know if the two things are not compatible with each other you may get this class cast exception okay so be very cautious when you use this particular method All right let's look at another variation okay let me set it to true and this one requires us to save the response as a string so we have this as string method using which we can store the response body in the form of a string all right so this as string works on the body of the response and convert that into its string representation now once you have the string representation of the response body all right you, now you don't need to instantiate the json path object all you can do is on the json path you have this from method okay and to that you provide in the string response okay and then again you can use those methods like get int all right and and now guys the name and gender they are string and string is also an object type okay so therefore you use the get method and then we are simply printing to the console all right let me save everything and execute it so we'll again see the same response for sean and mail there you go okay let me set it to false now in the next test case we are doing the inline assertion okay let me set it to true so instead of just printing out the person name this test case will check the data is actually correct okay so you get the response so on response you use the then method which returns you the validatable response okay and then you assert now you have this body method in that you provide in the json path okay and this particular equal to method comes from org.hemcrest.matches package okay so let me just save it and execute it
okay so it's passed if i change it to something else and execute it this would fail okay all right so it's failed and probably we'll see that this is not equal to this all right that's fine all right so let me go through uh, all the ways one more time so we are using the path method first okay on either the response object directly or we can also you know first fetch the body and then work on it okay so in the second one we are telling groovy that we are going to explicitly work on uh, json so just use this json path okay and in the third one we are converting our response body as a string first and then using json part dot from method we pass in that response as a string and then we concatenate all those get int get object methods and so on and in the last one we are doing the inline assertions okay so you hit the endpoint you get the response and you walk on it all right now since we know how to extract element or nodes from the json response we need to work with more complex json documents so i have created these two json documents under src test resources json docs json array and json dictionary as the name suggests one is json dictionary another is json array so in this particular test case we would work with dictionary and learn dot or square bracket notations to access json nodes well dot notation is faster to write and clear to read but square bracket notation allows access to properties containing special characters as a rule of thumb use bracket notation if the property name contains special characters such as spaces or begin with the character other than uppercase a to z lowercase a to z and underscore so i have read uh, the file first and created the uh, json path object like so now we have to write the json path to fetch the gender of person one okay so how do we write the json path we always start with the root element which is represented by dollar but in rest assured i don't need to mention dollar i can start with the direct child of root element so direct child in this case is person one okay so that's the first thing that i have to copy i go back and in here there are two sysout print statements okay first one is for dot notation second one is for square bracket notation so in both of these statements i first have to write person one okay then this person one is a dictionary okay and i now have to access the direct child of this dictionary which is gender okay so again go back and in case of dot notation you just say dot and gender but in case of square bracket notation so you say square bracket then you write two single quotes and within these single quotes you provide in the property name okay let me save it and execute this So ideally now we should see female okay for both of these statements okay so you see dot notation female and so okay so you know this one like i said is more readable compared to this but you know we have to use this when there are special characters available in the name of the keys okay let me show you so if i just change this gender to gen space dr okay i save it i go back and let me introduce the space in here as well okay so let me comment this out and show you that this one will error out okay that dr something is not the valid json path okay let me execute this and there you go we get the error and the error says the parameter der was used but not defined and define parameter using the json part dot parameters function well let us now comment this out and use the square bracket notation if i execute this on this time it would work and it will show us the valid result okay so this is where you have to use the square bracket notations let me change everything back to the normal save it and update my json dictionary as well okay change it to false now in the next case we are going to work with json array and here's my json array in this you see that the root element 
is an array okay and inside that you have objects okay so these all are items or within this particular array now in case of array if the json path return multiple nodes guys then we use the get list method isn't that obvious okay so let me change it to true again we are reading the file okay and we are supplying that file to the constructor of json path and like i said we have to use get list now if i want to return all the items from the array like i said you have to use the root element okay if you want to return the first item how do you do that so then ideally you know you write it like this okay in here you provide zero but remember you don't have to use dollar in such cases so you just say this okay now this is going to return you an object and hence we are using get and now if you want to retrieve a specific property for example you want to retrieve the name property of the first item then you say square brackets within that you provide the index and then you just say name okay remember this thing is case sensitive so i have used all uppercase because in my json array the name of the property is all uppercase okay let me save everything and execute this There you go so we get all the items then we get the specific item and then we have retrieved the name property from this item well that's all from this video in next one we'll look at some other key methods we will likely use with gpath in rest assured thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video